in Jordan and they will appear before you. يَقُولُونَ لِلْحَيْ And then they will say to those who arrive, تَعْرِفُنِي أَنَا أَخُوك أَنَا أَبُو Do you recognize me, son? I'm your father. I died 40 years ago. But I am here, I'm your father. He has the appearance of your father, exactly. He speaks with your father's voice, exactly. And more than that, he has your father's memory. He knows things only your father knows. He's a jinn. <coughs> the jinn lived for thousands of years. So the jinn had the record of everything that your father did in his life. As a memory of your father. So a day with a jinn is not like a day with us. Similarly, if you were to enter into the world in which the jinn are, and you want to perform salat, would you perform salat according to this timetable? No. The Prophet said you would have to calculate. And so the Dajjal is in that dimension of time. You can't see him yet. You will only be able to see him when his day is like your day. But he's on earth. Like the angels are on earth. Like the jinn are on earth. It is after the state of Israel has become the ruling state of the world, which appears to me to be shortly, maybe another five to ten years, within that game, time, you will know the sign. Number one will be a great war, a spectacular, a dazzling display of Israeli military might, particularly with the use of fighter aircraft. And at the same time that that takes place, the international monetary system collapses, and all the paper money can now be used as, 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 say, 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 as wallpaper, as wallpaper. They're not going to arrest you for that, as wallpaper. Okay? As wallpaper, then at that time, who will be the major beneficiary of the collapse of the international monetary system? Israel, the Jews, the Jewish bankers. Hmm? Israel now becomes the financial center of the world. They have the control over gold. We have experts sitting down in this audience now who know the subject better than me. Better than me. <laughs> Israel now becomes the ruling state in the world. Then a year like a day will begin. And when that day, when that year, sorry, a day like a week now begins, okay? And when that day like a week is coming to an end, it is at that time that the Jah will now appear in our world. I assume as the ruler of Israel. And it is that time that the attack will take place on Imam al-Mahdi. So this is the explanation of the Hadith pertaining to calculation. And we come to our three more questions, three last questions. The Quran was, Allah Allah will help to Allah Allah, but it created him and commanded us to me. He cannot so it's my last day. Thank you very much. belongs both Al-Khalq and Al-Amr. And over there he has said, Kulu ruhu min amri rabbi. Say to them that the ruh is from the amr of Allah. <coughs> uh, Imam al-Ghazali and uh, and Jalaluddin uh, Rumi and uh, so many other Sheikh Al Akbar Muhyiddin in Arabi and so many of other illustrious fathers of Islam have written on this subject. 
then there is a demarcation by Allah of two worlds. The world of khalq and the world of amr. These are two different worlds, but both belong to him. Both are in submission to him. Both are his creation. The roof belongs to this one. The trees belong to that one. But this is his creation and this is his creation. The Hindu says no. The Hindu says that this is Atma, the soul, and that is Paramatma, the great soul. And this Atma is a part of that Paramatma. And the destiny of the soul is to travel until it succeeds in reuniting with Paramatma and being absorbed into Paramatma, the great soul. So this is not the creation of that. This is a part of that. Pantheism. Allah lahu khalku wal dismisses pantheism. No. The soul is also Allah's creation. The soul also belongs to Him. It's His creation. Like the trees and the plants and the flowers. The rest is what I gave you in the lecture. That the distinctive difference between this and that is that this one possesses personality. In the case of the human being, the most highly developed form of personality, self-consciousness, self-directed way. I was taught this in 1965, <laughs> 36 years ago, by Murana Fadrahman Ansari, 36 years ago. Self-consciousness, self-directed will, creative intellect, capacity to pursue knowledge independently, and ability to show grace, to forgive. The jinn possess self-consciousness. The jinn possess a self-directed will, so they can make a free choice. The jinn also possess the capacity for independent thinking. But the jinn do not appear to have that fourth part. The angels have number one, self-consciousness. But the angels do not have number two and number three and number four. So there are gradations now in the development of personality in the world of um, that I gave you in the lecture. Uh, I have uh, a colleague with this, uh, Imam Adhara Eskandari. He has uh, sort of divided men into two, two identified groups. One is in the Asbab group and the other one is in the Tajiri group. The Asbab group and the Tajiri group are uh, two categorized groups whereby the Tajri group will believe everything comes from Allah. Whereas the Asbab group will only really think that, oh, I have to look for something before I can get that. So, in these two different categories, both are having that faith in Allah SWT, which means the Iman. <coughs> We all know that Iman has to be sustained at regular intervals, otherwise it will just fade off. What is the question? I'm coming to the question. Please, please. How are you going to maintain uh, or sustain this Iman in us, like as you say, this faith? How are we going to ensure that this faith is always there in us? Thank you very much. 
the group would say that everything comes from Allah would be correct if they say that everything is in the knowledge of Allah. Everything is in the knowledge of Allah. That you're going to commit suicide. That is already in the knowledge of Allah. But Allah is not responsible for your committing suicide. So you are responsible. It is in His knowledge that you are responsible for it. The group who says you've got to work for it before you get it must also recognize that it is in the knowledge of Allah. But Allah says if you don't reap, if you don't plant, you can't, you can't reap. Whether it be material possession, or whether it be knowledge, or whether it be spiritual growth, if you don't plant, you can't reap. The only people who reap without planting are Huh? The banks! <laughs> the banks! They don't plant, but they reap more than anybody else. If Allah says you can't reap unless you plant, and the banks are reaping without planting, how is it possible? The answer is that they are reaping what others are planting. The answer is the living of the sweat of others. <laughs> How can we keep Iman in the heart? Rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'da in hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahha There are some dua that you must recite constantly, constantly, constantly in this age. Number one of the list, number one, is Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa murzukna tiba'a Allah show me truth and grant me the capacity to recognize it as truth. They are asking for Mercedes Benz and they are asking for mansions in KL. I don't ask for that. This is all I ask for. Show me the truth and grant me the eyes with which to recognize it as truth. I don't ask for anything more. And when I recognize it as truth, grant that I may accept it and follow it. They take me to heaven. Wa Allah wa ayna al-baqila baqila wa zukna shtiraba. Others are asking for the world. This is all I ask for. Show me falsehood. Take the veils from off my eyes that I may see falsehood and recognize it as falsehood. And when I recognize it as falsehood that I may Turn away from it, reject it, oppose it, and thus be saved from the hellfire. This is dua number one. And then after it comes dua number two. Dua number two is this one. Rabbana la tuzid kulubana ba'da is hadaitana. Cause not our hearts to go astray after you have got us of this heart. So the way you stay on firm faith is by following Allah, following His commands, and constantly making the dua that Allah may protect you from turning away from the path of faith. Last question is Allah. Thank you. The question is that we must uh, have a teacher. So I'm uh, asking a question on the tariqa. That is, uh, I mean, in this age, is that compulsory for every Muslim?